All right, Professor Project team, another week, May 22nd to May 28th. Solid week of training coming up here. Um, I've been keeping really busy prepping for these semi-final workouts, uh, semi-finals in California, obviously, Pasadena. And I uh, wanted to take this opportunity, um, instead of talking about this week's training, to talk a little bit about competing and preparing for competition. So obviously, um, as a Professor Project member, you've got access to all those videos, and there's some great videos on there on how to prep for a comp, how to taper, um, some sheets that I've used and I'm using right now to fill out, okay, what am I gonna wear? What am I gonna eat? What's my pacing strategy? What's my warm up? What's my cool down? And actually writing those things down ahead of time so on the day I'm just following a script. And um, not only throughout the entire day, but also in the, in the workout itself, I sometimes describe competition workouts as painful choreography. So I think of it as like a very painful uh, solo dance. So if you're going out there and you're a you know, ballerina or something and you're, and you're dancing, you're putting on a show and you're following these steps, left foot, right foot, spin, and you're being judged. Um, it's all planned. However, with CrossFit, obviously there's a high degree of pain <laughs> and uh, suffering um, just because you're exercising very fast. And with every new workout, it's like a new routine. It's okay, I'm going to take three steps. I'm going to bend over. I'm going to grab the bar. I'm going to loosen my weight belt. I'm going to walk forward, left hand, right hand on the pull-up bar, you know, those sorts of things. So trying to run through that as many times as possible in my mind, um, you know, in the float tank. And so in training, um, you know, once you know the workouts, the question becomes, you know, do I practice the workouts? Do I do them in their entirety? Now, at a minimum, I would recommend doing as many of the transitions as you can. So for example, you know, in my training, if I'm, uh, let's say I'm doing some, some bench press, right? So I've got some dumbbell bench press at the semifinals. We've got bench press uh, for Linda. Um, so it's 10 deadlifts, 10 dumbbell bench press. You go forward, do 10 cleans with a barbell. You're going to come back and do deadlifts. So what I might do is I'll go, okay, when was Linda done before? It was done at the 2018 regionals. Go back and watch that. See how the floor was set up, probably set up similar. So when I'm doing my bench, if I'm doing, you know, five sets of five with two minutes rest dumbbell bench, instead of just doing five sets of five, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my floor with maybe like an empty bar. And so after the two minutes rest, I'll, I'll do one deadlift with an empty bar. I'll drop the bar, you know, 40, 195 pounds, and then I'll jog forward and I'll enter the bench like I will in competition. I'll bring the dumbbells up. I'll rock them back. I'll practice that transition. I'll do my five reps like I want to do them in competition with whatever technique I feel is appropriate. I'm going to set them down the way that I will in competition. I'll jog forward and I'll do one squat clean with a, with a barbell or a kettlebell or something just to kind of practice and get in those reps. So for every movement, if I'm practicing handstand pushups, I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to be entering into that handstand pushup wall in the competition? You know, what movements before or after that, maybe just jump down from the pull-up bar. If it's chest to bars, I'll just do one chest to bar, just hang off the bar, drop down, go forward. Um, or, you know, I'll think about, okay, you know, if I'm going to do my handstand pushups today, what workout is that in? Okay. That's in the workout with rowing. Okay. What shoes am I going to be wearing? Right. Am I going to be wearing a knee sleeve? I'm going to be wearing a belt. So when I practice my handstand pushups today, instead of just doing them with bare feet and, you know, a, a hat on or whatever, it's like, well, in that competition, in that workout, I'm going to be wearing a shirt. I'm going to be wearing knee sleeves. I'm going to be wearing, you know, whatever gear I'm going to wear, I'm going to put that on and practice what that feels like and maybe I'll learn something like oh I gotta make sure my belt is here and it's not too tight or um, I need to make sure my knee sleeves aren't this way or else it's uncomfortable when I'm upside down um, oh you know I have my grips on because that's a workout with you know toes to bar so I need to make sure I spin those and it's a little uncomfortable you know like this so I need to make sure they're a little looser than usual so I think that's a really important thing it's just like trying out all those things in your training leading up to a competition as soon as you know the workouts thinking about the clothing you're going to wear thinking about your pacing strategies thinking about those transitions getting more and more comfortable with those little details um you know because if you're let's say your sport is olympic weightlifting you know you're going to get really used to chalking your hands walking up onto the platform taking a deep breath looking at the clock thinking about a cue walking forward setting up doing your snatch right and that's what you do at every competition you can do that every single time you train you know that's what's coming whereas with crossfit i always try to mix it up in my training as much as i can so whenever i'm doing wall balls i'm going to do it you know to a slightly different target i'll do it on one wall I'll do it on another wall I'll do it on the rig mix it up as much as i can but once you know the workouts that's when it's time to hyper focus on those things so everything you do in your training you should be thinking how can this benefit 
what I'm doing that weekend. So if you have a squat clean, heavy squat clean, and let's say, you know, the tomorrow morning you're doing, you know, some, some front squats, three by three front squats. You're like, well, these front squats are going to help my squat clean. So I'm going to wear the same thing. Or I'm going to approach it the same way. I'm going to tape my thumbs the same way. You know, I'm going to set it up in the gym, you know, in some fashion that just benefits that event, the heavy clean event. Or, you know, for me, I'm, uh, you know, uh, let's say I'm working on some sort of overhead mobility work or something. It's like, well, I'm going to do it specifically for the overhead squat and the squat snatch because those are two things I have in my upcoming competition. That overhead position needs to be really feeling really good. So I'm going to make sure I'm dialing it in for that. I'm not dialing it in for a, uh, you know, an overhead walking lunge or a, you know, um, one arm overhead squat with a dumbbell. It's like just a little bit different, um, you know, way I might approach my mobility if, uh, but if I know, okay, external rotation, it's going to be the handstand pirouettes. It's going to be the squat snatch and it's going to be the overhead squat for reps with a barbell. So those sorts of things I think are important. Um, so you can just kind of hyper-focus on those. And then the question is, do I do the workout? And the answer to that is it's a cost benefit thing. So anytime you do most competition workouts, they're really challenging, right? They're going to make you exhausted. The further out from competition you are, the more likely I'm going to say yes. So if a workout's announced three weeks before competition, nine times out of 10, you're probably just going to do it. Cause you're like, well, I have plenty of time to recover. If it's one week away, you might go, well, it's kind of start time to taper. Um, especially if that's like a one rep max, it's like, oh, maybe build up to your opener. You know, I don't want you maxing out your, your deadlift or your clean and jerk, um, you know, six days before you're actually maxing out. It's like, you can, you know, work on the technique of it, build up to your opener. Um, and then, you know, you have three attempts on the day. So maybe you build up to 200 pounds and on the day you open with 200 and then you do 210, 220. Um, and then when you do the workout, if you do decide to do a workout prior to the competition, the most important thing is setting it up in a way that's going to give you the most possible data. So instead of just, you know, setting the clock and just giving her a rip, you need to think, okay, you know, how can I set this up so it's as similar as possible to the competition to what I think it's going to be? How do I think that layout on the floor is going to be wherever I am? If it's semifinals for me, if you're going to a local gym and their throwdown, you're thinking about how their gym is laid out, maybe go to their Instagram profile, see how their gym's laid out. And they're like, well, you're doing thrusters and running, probably have to run out that back door. There's, you know, try to set it up in your mind and then set it up in your gym as close as possible or a little harder. Uh, I'd rather you set it up with a little bit more transition or a little bit, you know, more inconvenient or maybe, oh, I have to turn around every time before I do my chest of bars. And then when you get there, you can just walk right up into your chest of bars. It's just, you know, one more, two more seconds you don't have to worry about. But I always try to set it up a little harder. And if you don't know the rule for something like for us, we don't know the exact standard for the uh, seated legless rope climb yet so i'm going to do it to the toughest standard so i'm going to start from seated i'm going to keep the rope on the outside of my leg i'm going to touch the top and i'm going to legless descend down until i'm like basically back on the floor because it's like oh i know if i can do that if the standard's a little bit easier then on the day it's just going to feel a little easier every other part of the workout you know my core and my grip is just going to be that much less fatigue whereas i'd hate to do an easy standard oh it's just going to be 13 feet and you can do this oh, no problem and then the standard's harder you're going to go oh, how's that going to affect me right? Is, is my core and my grip going to be so much more fatigued? And I try to approach it like I did in the gym and I start falling apart. Um, I hear that happen to a lot of people. They're like, oh man, you know, I was walking on all the transitions because in my gym, I didn't have any transitions. I just grabbed the bar. I was right underneath the pull-up rig. And now I'm at the floor, I do my pull-ups and I have to run forward 50 feet to the barbell and I just walked and I lost all this time. Oh shoot. It's like, well, in training, maybe set up that transition so you have a really long way to go. Um, and then as far as strategy goes, when you do it in your gym, you know, there's a couple things like sometimes it really depends on the type of athlete you are and what the workout is. Sometimes it pays to maybe go a little bit hot. Like for me, there might be a workout where I go, you know what? I want to know if I can go out hot and hold on, if that's going to be possible. So I might do that. Most of the time I would just recommend creating a strategy that is as smart as possible. You know, do that workout like it's the first and last time you're going to do it, go hard, but go smart, pace it as intelligently as possible. And if you're keeping track of your training, you should know what your tendencies are. If after every workout you go, man, I started too fast, man, I started too fast, man, I started too fast, then you should start more of your workout slower. So in this case, you're like, let's not start this one fast. Let's start this at a reasonable pace that I feel as though I can maintain. 
Um, and then on the flip side, if you're always like, man, I think I overpaced that, you know, I didn't find the limit because I was just too cautious. It's like, well, okay, maybe this is an opportunity to, you know, start a little bit faster, be a little more aggressive in your transitions. Maybe instead of, you know, starting with uh, sets of three on your toes to bar, let's do fives or something like that. Um, so whether or not to actually do the, the test, you need to ask yourself um, beforehand, you need to ask yourself, like, if I don't do the workout, do I think I have enough information that I can still attack this workout with a lot of uh, intensity? You need to ask yourself, if I do this workout, is it going to take away from my fitness or my training? Am I going to get so sore or injured that it's not going to be worth it? So if you're dealing with like a shoulder injury and there's a workout with a bunch of ring muscle ups, overhead squats, squat snatches, you're like, is this just going to make it worse and I can't train leading up to the event? Um, then don't do it. Um, and also for some people, if you do the workout and it's really hard and you do it in its entirety, um, sometimes it kind of can psych you out on game day where you're like a little, oh man, that hurts so much. I don't want to hurt that much again. Or if you're someone who's kind of really inconsistent with your technique, what you might find is, uh, you know, you start to feel something completely different on the competition floor and you try to emulate exactly what you did in training Maybe you're getting no reps, you're trying to catch up to your old pace, and then it all goes to crap. And so I've talked to athletes, games athletes, really good games athletes, they don't like to test workouts sometimes because of that. You know, in training, they went, oh, I went unbroken, went nice and smooth, went really well. And then in competition, you know, they try to do that same thing, and maybe they're overheating, or maybe they get a couple no reps, or, you know, something, maybe they're shoulders are more sore from a workout before, and it kind of throws them off. They find like, oh, I, you know, I was so hell bent and, and felt confident that I could do this strategy ABC and things started to fall apart and I didn't adapt well. And so they found that, you know, I'm better off just doing like a variation of the workout and training, practice those transitions, practice the general feel of how those movements are going to be mixed together. And then on game day, just go based on feel and go based off intuition. And so, you know, you could have a workout, um, like a workout from this competition that you could do a variation of would be like the ring muscle up pistol burpee box jump. So maybe they're like, you know what? I don't want to do that workout exactly as it's written. You have to do the um, ring muscle ups in a vest and you have to do pistols, box jumps, rest and repeat. And like, you know what? I don't really want to do that exact workout. So I'm going to do a variation of it. I'm going to do instead of three rounds, I'm going to do two rounds. I'm going to do more reps. And I just kind of want to feel how those movements play off each other you know, is my press fatiguing? How hard do those muscle ups get in that weight vest after doing a bunch of pistols and my core is fatigued from the, the pistols and the burpees. And you just kind of want to feel like, you know, what's, what's going to, what's this going to feel like at the end of the workout? What are these muscle ups going to feel like after a bunch of pistols and a bunch of burpees? And like, that's really the only question they need to have answered. So they're going to set up some training and set up some workouts that solve that question. So they can go into it knowing, okay, like it's going to hurt, but I'm going to be fine. Um, as opposed to, I need to get this number of burpees because that's what I did in training. And then if that starts to fall apart, it can mess with their head. Anyway, all of that to say, I'm very excited for semis. I hope all of you are uh, to watch and um, I hope that helps if you've got a competition coming up, uh, gives you something to chew on uh, as far as how to determine how to prep for those workouts. Uh, but like I said, you know, just try to focus on those details and watch the video, watch the video in the professor project um, and, you know, use those documents that can help you prep your food, get your clothes ready, your warm up strategies, your cool down strategies. What are the specific pacing strategies? Do I have pacings on a bike? All that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. Enjoy the week of training. I know I have. I uh, hope you guys do too.